staff. As a kid, my neighbor had this toy which he swore was the greatest toy in existence. It was a little red robot that could transform into an admittedly cool-looking sports car. According to him, his robot was so amazing that it actually kicked the ass of my own little blue robot that turned into a jet. And more than that, he had the cartoon to prove it. This little discussion with my neighbor was pretty much my introduction to the Autobot warrior, Sideswipe, and by association, his twin brother, Sunstreaker, both of whom became instant favorites of mine as a kid. Of course, just to spite my friend, I insisted that Sunstreaker was the better twin, simply because it was actually Sunstreaker who shot down my blue jet. Anyway, despite having arguably two of the coolest designs, the twins, or as many fans endearingly refer to as the Lamb Bros, due to their Lamborghini alt modes, weren't featured much in the original cartoon and comic. For some reason, they were often relegated to background characters, only stepping up when some action, or more specifically some jet judo in the battlefield was required. As the years passed, Sunstreaker basically cemented himself as my number one Transformer of all time. And although I didn't latch on quite as much to Sideswipe due to his connection to my delusional neighbor, he wasn't that far behind in my personal rankings. But I've already talked quite a lot about Sunstreaker already, and so this time around, I'd like to focus on his brother. Despite being hardly used, the Lamb Bros have become favorites with a number of Transformer fans, including myself, primarily for one major reason, and that is, they had something that most Transformers didn't have, and that would be each other. In a world of mechanical beings, the concept of siblings isn't one that was really explored. Sunstreaker and Sideswipe were just brothers, period, no explanation needed. But it was this relationship that I think attracted many fans to them because almost all of us have brothers or at least very close friends that we consider as brothers. Hell, I have four and so many of us could relate to their dynamic of sibling love and rivalry. Taken as a pair, there were a lot of similarities between the Lamb Bros. Both Sideswipe and Sunstreaker transformed into very stylish Lamborghini Countach, which was one of the most popular and iconic sports cars of the 80s. And both twins were skilled and effective warriors on the battlefield. But even as early as their initial tech specs, their unique personalities were laid out. Sunstreaker was the more ruthless and competent warrior, and he was also more vain, the complete egotist. Sideswipe, on the other hand, is nearly his equal on the battlefield, just less cold-blooded. And he was more open to more underhanded tactics. Anything to get the win. I guess you could say that Sideswipe was the more likable twin, while Sunstreaker set himself up as more of a loner. Sideswipe always struck me as being more personable and more popular with his fellow Autobots. Another interesting tidbit with their bios was that the description of their equipment and weaponry seemed reversed with Sideswipe described to having pile drivers and a rocket pack that are actually present in the Sunstreaker toy, which had fists that could be switched out with possible pile driver-ish looking things, and a backpack that formed engine intakes in his car mode. Special shout out to all the commenters in my Sunstreaker video for correcting me when I referred to them as exhausts. The reason for this is that the initial plan was to have the twins come in their original Diaclone toy colors. So Sunstreaker was supposed to be a yellow Sideswipe toy and Sideswipe a red Sunstreaker. Got that? But for some reason, this was switched up last minute and so we got what we got. So after years of just being the cool brothers in the background, their characters and more importantly their relationship with each other as brothers were expanded more in later media and most effectively in my opinion in the IDW comics. In the IDW continuity, before the Great War, despite being brothers, Sunstreaker was originally Sideswipe's P3 training officer, basically his superior and would constantly look down on him and treat him like a rookie. This left Sideswipe with a growing sense of resentment as he felt that nothing he ever did was good enough for his brother. He basically felt that he was constantly having to pull himself out from under Sunstreaker's shadow. It wasn't long before the brothers were employed as law enforcers for the Senate and spent their free time attending illegal underground arena gladiatorial death matches, where a certain ruthless warrior named Megatron was dominating and slowly building up a strong cult following. It was really Sunstreaker who was attracted more to these matches, and Sideswipe merely went along to keep his brother in check. A rather important detail since that in the bigger picture, Sideswipe notes that his brother would have most certainly ended up joining the Decepticons had it not been for him. So, thanks, Sideswipe. Once the war broke out, as the story goes, the brothers joined the ranks of the Autobots, and they eventually received separate assignments, with Sunstreaker being sent to a far-off backward planet called Earth, 
as part of Prowl's infiltration team, and Sideswipe being assigned under Hound to guard a location in Cybertron called Thunderhead Pass, which was formerly the site of an epic battle between the Autobots and the immensely destructive Decepticon pretender Thunderwing. At that point though, it was basically a dead zone, and they were charged with merely guarding the remains of a deactivated Thunderwing. The fact that his brother got assigned to a more exciting post and he was stuck with what he considered a dead-end job frustrated Sideswipe to no end, and his frustration grew even more when he found out that Sunstreaker was taken out by the nefarious human organization called the Machination, and it seemed like the Autobots weren't doing much about it. Sideswipe constantly railed against his superiors to let him go to Earth so that he could find his brother, not so much because he cared for his well-being. Well, I guess there was a little bit of that, but more importantly because he wanted to stick it to Sunstreaker when he would eventually rescue him. It wasn't long though before Thunderhead Pass was eventually attacked by a mysterious ancient Decepticon called Galvatron. No relation to Megatron in this universe, who easily took out Hound's team including Sideswipe and reclaimed the deactivated Thunderwing. So with basically nothing left to guard, Sideswipe finally got his wish for a transfer to Earth. And despite him never actually finding or rescuing his brother, he was able to effectively prove to his superiors and more importantly to himself that he was a very capable warrior by taking on the Decepticons, Grindcore, and Straxus all by himself. Sideswipe came to the realization that he didn't actually care if Sunstreaker was dead or alive. Okay, so I'd like to think that he would have preferred his brother alive, but well, you get the point. Moving forward, Sideswipe was good to go. He was eventually reunited with his brother Sunstreaker, who himself had gone through his own life-changing journey, being bonded with a human, Hunter Onion, and turned into a headmaster against his will by the Machination. The process was eventually reversed, but the traumatic experience left immense psychological scars on Sunstreaker that eventually led him to betray the Autobots and ultimately to his sacrifice to redeem himself. Anyway, during a confrontation with Bombshell, the Insecticon revealed to Sideswipe that he was in possession of the human hunter, and he basically used him as a lab rat to mess with Sunstreaker's head. In the end, Sideswipe tracks down Hunter, whom he finds in an irreversible catatonic state, and so mercifully shuts down the machinery that was keeping him alive. After that series of unfortunate events, Sideswipe continued the good fight against the Decepticons, and eventually came to foster a close, platonic relationship with fellow Autobot RC. It was over their mutual love for violence and combat that they bonded. Yes, in this universe, RC was an unhinged killing machine. But she did get better, and her relationship with Sideswipe and him accepting her for who she was played an important role in that. Unfortunately though, this friendship wouldn't last long, as during an ill-fated mission to protect Alpha Trion, both Sideswipe and RC are overrun by a mob of Decepticons. Sideswipe, who was the last Autobot standing, is taken out by a series of explosives and a final shot by the Combaticon Brawl as he lay helpless. He survives, barely, and is essentially placed on life support inside a stasis tube. Despite the Autobots' best effort and the constant presence of RC and occasional visits by Sunstreaker, Sideswipe ultimately doesn't make it. And in a touching send-off with the help of the junkie on Rekgar's Nemnopathis projector, they create a dream inside Sideswipe's mind wherein he successfully wakes up from his coma. In this virtual dream world, Sideswipe travels back to Cybertron with RC to search for Sunstreaker, whom in a reverse parallel to their original story, he fears has been taken by the Decepticons. When he does eventually find him though, he finds his brother working with the Decepticons. But not in the way that you would think. Sideswipe finds out that in his long absence, a lot has changed in the world. The Great War has ended and Decepticons and Autobots have reunited, working peacefully together to restore their ravaged society. Seeing this, Sideswipe comes to the realization that all his pain and sacrifices, all the endless fighting that he, his brother, RC, and all his fellow Autobots went through wasn't in vain that there was an end goal worth fighting for. Slowly realizing that this was still all currently just a dream, he accepts his fate. Sideswipe thanks his dear friend RC and his brother Sunstreaker for showing him that it would be all okay. And with that, the dream ends. Knowing that he had ultimately done good in the universe, in a rather uncharacteristic way for a warrior to go out, Sideswipe stopped fighting and died in peace. Wow. Okay, that was quite a way to go out. Very touching if you ask me. So, allow me a moment to gather myself. And while I do that, why not take the time out to subscribe to my channel? It would really help me out a lot in telling more stories. And if you already are a regular viewer, then thank you. Your support is very much appreciated. So, are we good? Let's get into more Sideswipe, shall we? 
Considering how often it seemed like Sideswipe felt overshadowed by his brother, I'd like to mention a few notable times wherein he was featured out on his own without his sunny brother at his side. The first was when Hasbro tried to breathe new life into the Transformers toy line with their Generation 2 rebranding in the 90s. To be honest, I was pretty much out of toy collecting by this point, but from what little I know, Generation 2 was basically the same Generation 1 toys repackaged in alternate and mostly hideously beautiful neon coloring. Even the original cartoon was re-released, now with snazzy new CGI animated bumpers between scenes and commercial breaks. Anyway, Sideswipe was one of the original Autobots released in Generation 2 without his brother. And he came in a reversed scheme of predominantly black with red as his secondary color and some neon green highlights to boot. He also came with an upgraded arsenal with dual wielding guns and spiked wheels. The second and more popular Sideswipe was in the 2009 live action movie Revenge of the Fallen. After being completely blown away by the first movie, I was beyond excited for the sequel and was constantly eating up every single detail about it as it popped up online. In the early stages, amidst all the speculation on which new characters would be featured, the name Sideswipe and Twins was constantly brought up. And with that, I was over the moon. Wow, my favorite Lambo brothers would finally get the spotlight in a live action movie. Then we got this. The car that Sideswipe was supposedly going to transform into. Okay, so not a red Countach. I get it, Volkswagen, War Toys, not a match. So they needed to find another car. And to be fair, the 2009 Corvette Stingray concept was an awesome looking car, so I was cool with it. So could we get that in yellow for Sunstreaker? And then just like that, all my hopes were dashed when these guys were revealed to be the twins. Ugh. So yeah, you know how this goes. We didn't get the twins that we had hoped for, and we didn't get Sunstreaker. But we did get Sideswipe, and well, he was decent. He had a pretty interesting design with wheels instead of feet, and he was quite fluid in his movement. Basically a roller skating robot. And he did what he was probably made to do. As what would become pretty much the norm for the Bay movies, Sideswipe got his cool introduction action scene where he slices up the fleeing Decepticon sideways in half, strikes a pose, and gives out his one defining line of dialogue. Damn, I'm good. And that's it. He had one more outing in the next movie, Dark of the Moon, where he had another memorable fight scene alongside Ironhide with the Decepticon dreads, and then we never saw him again. No touching and dramatic send-off for this Sideswipe. He was basically killed off screen in between the third and fourth movies. Not the best, but a lot better than what his brother got, which was nothing as he was basically left off the live action movies because I figured they only had room for one yellow Autobot. Anyway, I'd like to think that despite not doing much, the live action Sideswipe did help in building up, if anything, the Sideswipe name for the mainstream audience. So much so that in the 2015 cartoon series Robots in Disguise, an Autobot named Sideswipe was added to the main cast of Good Guys. And even if he still wasn't a Lamborghini, this Sideswipe had won over the movie version in that he was red. And that's basically where it ends. Even if I didn't really watch the series, I knew enough about the character as he was the immature, impulsive, and rebellious member of the group. Not a seasoned warrior like the OG Swipe. In fact, his personality fit in more with another more obscure Autobot named Fastlane, which made sense since Fastlane was initially the working name for the character during the early development stages of the series. Another interesting note though is that in the G1 continuity, Fastlane also has a brother. Okay, if you want to be more technical about it, a clone named Cloud Raker. So how's that for a nice coincidence? And finally, let's finish strong with the toys, shall we? Most likely due to the fact that the Lamborghini Countach was a very popular car in the 80s and that the toy was one of the better ones in the line, it wasn't much of a surprise that for the original Diaclone toys, Takara released the Countach car robo that would eventually become Sideswipe in different colors and decos. There was the aforementioned yellow Sideswipe, a black version, and the police version, all of which were eventually brought over into the mainline Transformers universe as exclusive new characters. Yellow Sideswipe was named Tiger Track, the black one, Deep Cover, and the police version, now Deep Cover's older brother, Clampdown. Of course, we can't forget the Season 2 character, Red Alert, the Fire Chief Kuntash, who in Japan was actually believed to be Sideswipe's brother due to the fact that aside from sharing the same mold, Sunstreaker was not sold in the Japanese market outside of a special Versus set with the Autobot Skids and Decepticon Buzzsaw, so he wasn't that readily available. 
Now that's a whole lot of Lambros to go around. Even years later, the popularity of the Lambo mold carried on to modern Transformers, especially in the most recent War for Cybertron Siege, Earthrise, and Kingdom toy lines from 2019 to 2021. A Cybertron mode of Sideswipe was released as part of the first wave of Siege, and it was soon after repainted as Red Alert, G2 Sideswipe, Tiger Track, and Deep Cover. It was even heavily retooled into a cool Transformers Back to the Future crossover bot named Gigawatt. A few years later, a proper Earth mode retool was released as well for Sideswipe and repainted as Red Alert and Clampdown. This mold and subsequent retools is probably up there with one of the most reused in the Transformers line ever. Of course, as far as toys go, Sideswipe deserves due recognition for being the first, for lack of a better word, regular car robots to get an official masterpiece treatment. Prior to Sideswipe, Takara's MP line was seen mainly as a series of one-off releases and not as an all-encompassing line. And as such, only heavy hitters like Prime, Megatron, and Starscream were expected to get the masterpiece treatment. So Sideswipe's announcement and release took everyone by surprise, and so suddenly, every character was on the table. And even if Masterpiece Sideswipe is now well over a decade old, it's still a pretty decent toy with almost all the usual Sideswipe brothers having all gotten their inevitable Masterpiece repaints as well. But as good as Masterpiece Sideswipe was for its time, it really did start to show its age next to his brother Sunstreaker, who finally got his Masterpiece treatment over 5 years later. Third-party company Bad Cube did try to rectify that with their release of a Masterpiece Sideswipe in 2018 called Steamroll. But there was something a little off for me. I bought it, fiddled around with it, and then promptly sold it off. There does seem to be a promising one incoming though with DX9's Red Storm, but I think that one is still a ways away. There's still room for my favorite third-party company fans toys or hell even Takara to take a stab at a 2.0 version. But until then, MP12 Sideswipe will be okay for my display. Now even if this is basically a Sideswipe story, by default I've mentioned his main Lambro Sunstreaker already throughout. If you haven't watched his story, please do check it out as it's one of my favorites here. Or if you prefer one about his other special friend RC, you can go here. Either way, thanks for watching and I hope you come back for more.